VGA motherboards get a little wonky. People are already making Switch 2 M.2 adapters and Nvidia's CPU is crazy good. Let's get to the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. This Wednesday, June 11th, 2025. Had a little burp there because I've been drinking my, uh, my switch. Man, I love being back in this country. But while people would love to have EVGA back, the fact that they're not is creating problems for them when it comes to upgrading to modern hardware. There's reports coming out that RTX 50 series GPUs are not playing well with certain EVGA motherboards because of select pins that are on the 50 series cards that don't work well with the SM bus pins that are found on an EVGA Z690 classified motherboard, which is causing it to not work properly, which has led to a lot of people on the subreddit for EVGA saying that EVGA has really dropped the ball, left their motherboard users out to dry, and it's a big problem. However, the Reddit forums has allowed people to also find out that there is a way to fix this by using Captain Tape on the SM bus pins that need to be covered so that the 50 series card doesn't get confused and makes it easier to work. So it's a tricky situation that people are finding themselves in with motherboards. And if you're finding yourself in a tricky situation with your PC, you should check out today's video sponsor. Do you have a ton of super valuable files that you just don't know what to do with? Well, lucky for you, today's sponsor, Silverstone, has a ton of options for different ways to store your terabytes of old school RuneScape, RuneCraft, and gameplay footage. If you've got an M.2 NVMe that you really need to access the files on, but no M.2 connections available in your machine, look no further than the MUA01. This nifty little enclosure will take your M.2 NVMe and basically turn it into a U.2 SSD. This rugged little guy is made out of an aluminum alloy, so your data is safe from any unwanted physical attacks. Oh, and if your motherboard supports hot swapping, the MUA01 does as well. Now, let's say you've got a similar, but kind of opposite problem. All your important junk is loaded onto roughly four U.2 SFF8639 drives, but you only have one five and a quarter inch drive bay open. The FS204 US is literally the exact solution you need. This high grade steel adapter cage features two 40 millimeter fans and has space to accommodate two and a half inch drives up to 15 millimeters in thickness. Each drive gets its own individual metal key lock extra security as well. So no matter what your storage looks like, Silverstone offers ways to make it work in your machine. You can check out both the MUA O1 and the FS204 US today via the link in the description below. Huge thanks to Silverstone for sponsoring. Well, just like I love Silverstone for things like their U.2 setups, but also going out of their way to make the retro looking PCs with the FLP01 and the 02 that they showed off at Computex, I always just like to highlight when companies do something a little bit off the beaten path when it comes to the look or feel of their various products. And that's exactly what we have from Gigabyte here with their new b 850 M Force Micro ATX motherboards. Bam, white, black, orange, new color scheme. This reminds me of the color fire, like cat motherboards that were out recently, but you had trouble finding them here in the United States. No, not here, back in the United States. And so this, I think it's just a, a step in the right direction, getting back to where we were decades ago where PCs had more personality and flair than just being rectangular boxes filled with white or black components and maybe a little bit of RGB. Having some actual color on the components, I think is a good move, Gigabyte keep going. And that's what I want to say to NASA when it comes to the James Webb Space Telescope, because there's a big old dump of data that hit the internet where you can now interact with a searchable database for a large portion of photos that the JWST has taken, but a small portion of the sky, 0.54 degrees of it. But if you head on over to the Cosmos Web website, it's an interactive map that just goes in high resolution whenever you click in to, to look at something. I think I read that it's something like eight 800,000 galaxies are presented here. It's just absolutely beautiful. I love space. I love NASA stuff. I just want more of this. It makes me happy. You know what else makes me happy? Seeing Reese. And I want to see him bring you the deals. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bring the hottest tech deals out on the internet. And hey, I'm here again today. So let me jump into the deals for you guys. Starting off, we have this Cooler Master Hyper Spectrum V3 CPU air cooler, which you can grab for only $14.99, making it $15.03 off. Ooh, yummy. 
Yummy deal. It starts again. It's a yummy deal you got there. And then next up, we have the Steel Series QCK XXL Cloth Gaming Mouse Pad for only $19.99, making it $15 off. That's a double XL yummy. Hmm. And then lastly today, we have the Belkin 7-in-1 Thunderbolt 3 Dark Core for only $29.99, making it $70 off. 7-in-1 was your nickname in high school. Oh, of course it was. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, thanks, Reese. You know, you might be getting a good deal on the Nintendo Switch 2 storage, potentially sometime soon, if Nintendo uh, completely go against how they've previously acted in the past, because people have found out that the micro SD Express cards that are now going to be used in the Switch 2 have roughly the same pinout as an M.2 NVMe setup. And so there are adapters that are being hypothesized that you could plug in and just have expandable storage for your Switch 2. Obviously, this looks really flimsy and very difficult to potentially not snap in half if you're using it. But there's a GitHub page where you can check all of this out at NVNT Labs. So you could potentially have a Switch 2 M.2 NVMe SSD in case that's something you want. But there is specification that you should only use low voltage, low power drives because micro SD Express puts out less power than what you need for a high end M.2 NVMe SSD. So you shouldn't be putting in a Gen 5, especially because I think this is PCI Express 3 with one lane. So it's it's significantly reduced over uh, what modern NVMe SSDs do. It'd be more for having a more affordable storage than it would be for having faster storage. This also has led to a bunch of people hypothesizing whether or not you can put an eGPU on it, which technically, yes, you could go micro SD Express to the M.2, M.2 to a PC, a full PCI Express and plug in a graphics card there. But as I showed in our PlayStation 5 video where I did that way back yonder. I think I didn't even have eyebrows because it was right after a charity stream. Um, when you try to put a GPU on the M.2 adapter for the PlayStation 5, it doesn't do anything because the software doesn't recognize it. So you'd have to hack the Nintendo Switch's software, potentially get something like Android running on it, or uh, if somebody is even more creative, Windows ARM, and then you could maybe have GPU support at that point, but software-wise, Nintendo will never let that happen. Mm -mm. But while the Switch 2 is exciting for some people, it has the NVIDIA processors in it. The PC people can get excited for NVIDIA's processors that are supposed to be coming out later this year. The N1X getting its first benchmark in Geekbench and showing off its CPU power, not its graphical power, which NVIDIA fairly good at making graphics. We haven't really seen them make a high powered CPU in combination with ARM before. In a traditional consumer setting, they are making it for their super chips, their Grace Hopper super chips. But the N1X coming in with a single core score on Geekbench 6 of 3096 and a multi-core score of 18,837. And it's achieving that because it has 20 cores, 10 fast ones, 10 slow ones, and single core wise, it can boost up to four gigahertz. Additionally, what is being found in this testing is that this had 128 gigabytes of RAM. So you're looking at something that's on par with something like the M4 Max in terms of high-end memory or the Strix Halo AI Max 395 Plus I'm pretty sure I butchered that name. So the configurations that people have been excited for the all compact APUs that we have here. And if you compare this Geekbench 6 score to what we see from the likes of the Apple M4 Max or something like the Strix Halo chip, you'll find that the single core score on the N1X beats out AMD's Strix Halo coming in just slightly faster than it. It does still lose to the M4 Max by a considerable margin. And one of the disadvantages it has is its multi-core score. It actually scored significantly worse than the AI Max Plus, which is a 16 core chip, but it's full fat Ryzen cores that are in there. And it also significantly loses out to the M4 Max. But based on a first showing and that single core score, it does look like this could potentially be a very competent on the go gaming slash productivity device if Windows ARM support got better, which maybe if Nvidia's money's behind it, there could be a lot more development in that and actually push it forward outside of what Qualcomm is trying to do with their Snapdragon Elite stuff that hasn't really manifested. There's bad driver support there. I know people are gonna make fun of Nvidia for their driver support, but I think it's significantly better than what Qualcomm's been doing with the uh, X1 chips that they have, the Pro 
Pro in the Elite or Plus in Elite, I forget. But this is an exciting future. There's a lot more hardware coming out, a lot more variety that's gonna be moving forward, especially if ARM support can be developed for things like Windows. Then we can have more competition in this space where you got companies like Apple, AMD, Intel, and Nvidia all going head to head in G CPUs. And then what's gonna happen on the graphical side uh, people are still gonna buy NVIDIA. There was a recent market report that came out that uh, showed that uh, despite the RX 9000 series uh, being great, uh, AMD lost discrete GPU market share, so. <laughs> and I'm ha 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 to the future when Reese is here because we'll do comment response for you. We got Gonna Be Leggies, a double back to back, saying the Xbox <laughs> ally finally getting Windows to allow cutting the fat of the OS and snoozing non-essential background tasks when gaming is crazy. Side note, hope the move went well. Did it? That is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And then Xavier says, now they cooked, guys, they actually cooked harder than the deck. When they show the price, these green pieces. <laughs> I don't know. I think. Um, this is a hard one to, to. I think it'll probably end up being the same price as the regular Ally. Yeah. Uh, 500 bucks for the regular and then 800 bucks for the Ally X. And then you see a $100 drop here and there. Yeah, I don't anticipate that they're gonna be that much more expensive, which is why like they're not releasing now. They're waiting until the Z2 Extreme is ready. Mm -hmm. And I don't anticipate AMD is gonna raise the price on that too much. I think the, the price is gonna be um, just about in line with where we're already at. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that's gonna completely surprise us there. Yeah, because they didn't change anything really besides the operating system and the chip. Like the RAM's still the same, the screen is still yeah. the same as far as I know, the layout is still the same. And hopefully that keeps all the production costs down because they're just... Yeah, and the, the extra production costs to get the grips, I, it's gotta be minimal. So yeah. I don't know that they're gonna be... I, I mean, I can eat my words and they Yeah, do. no, absolutely, things, things do change. But they are still competing with the Switch and the Steam Deck slash Steam Deck 2, if that ever yeah. releases anytime soon. So the price points are kind of already set for the competition. We, we know the market at this point. Yeah. Then Jay Carmen saying, is the move to South Africa a permanent one for you? I know you said your son had been doing better lately, so I was sort of surprised to hear about the move back to South Africa. Glad everything is going that well. Yeah. Um, so I, I, there were a couple comments about this, and uh, I think what I'll say is that nobody is more concerned for our son's health than my wife, number one, and then me, number two. And um, this is not something that we just decided to do. Yeah. Like, we've been talking about this for two straight years. Yes. And this is a multi-stage process where we have uh, made trips to talk to doctors here. We've made trips to uh, consult uh, various services that we would need. We did not uh, decide to just do this. This was investigation. And, um, you know, one of, the, one of the nice things that's happened over the last six years is that we've learned how to manage our son's uh, disease. And we did not know that six years ago in 2019. And we also didn't know when the doctors were telling us to do things that were dangerous for, for our son. So now we have uh, we've seen the best experts in the world for Emmett's disorder. And so we have them on consultation. Um, we have a doctor here who's willing to consult, which was way different than it was six years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, we've, we've done a lot behind the scenes to make this happen. And there was a lot of things that were out of our control. Um, that we couldn't force, and if they didn't happen, we weren't making this move. But everything over the last two years has fallen into place. The U.S. team is incredibly strong. Mm -hmm. Kyler and Michael, uh, kind of the, the foundation there. You know, I was talking with Kyler about this. I have spent more time in person continuously with him than any of you. Yeah, yeah, that's we were, crazy. We were thinking about that the other day. Like, it's it's yeah. going to be a completely different dynamic. Yeah, too. you've almost been here for eight years, but. Like so, so many of those have been remote at this yes, point. Yes, exactly. Kyler, Kyler's had a lot of FaceTime with me. Um, he, he got a promotion to be the U.S. office manager. We have other team members on the U.S. side. We're in a really healthy place that like I couldn't have dreamt of six years ago when we left. That was horrible um, and chaotic and bad. And now we're coming back in a place of strength, in a place of like we know we can take care of everything. And we also have backup plans for backup plans for backup plans on how to take care of things. So yeah, 
that's like we are we are very concerned for our son's health but in a way where we know we can manage it and so theoretically this is permanent yeah and as far as the office side of things go as someone who worries about every little detail i'm actually really excited about how things are going mm -hmm. yeah we never wanted to leave south africa and now we get to come back and you know that doesn't mean that i won't make trips back to the states i probably will quite often but yeah. And then a reckless bunny saying, as someone who's trying to rent in the US, finding a house to rent with either a garage or basement is harder to find than one that comes with a fridge and dishwasher. Look, I got one thing to say. What the heck is with your house prices there? It scares the heck out of me just thinking about it. Well, it also, so we do it like, I've only taken you to like, proper places to live not the rural like small towns no where, no absolutely like, like it's always been in a city kind of yeah so prices are elevated because of that if you go to places that have you know 10 thousand people or fewer then the prices aren't terrible yeah my my brain is just so city aligned that like doing an apples to apples comparison yeah pretoria to pittsburgh it's ridiculous it blew my mind mm -hmm. then we got a asher saying scheduled floor time Flirt time. Please explain what was said and what that means. I'm having a misheard lyrics moment. Why not both? Yes. She's flirting while on the floor. It's best advantage point. H have you ever been flirted with while somebody was on the floor staring up at you? You'd give in. You'd succumb. It's all about knowing your angles. Mm -hmm. And then Blue Bean says, the blue bull shirt next to the <laughs> shark's beanie. I didn't notice that at all. I did. I did first thing in the morning when you showed up with the blue bull shirt. <laughs> Hope y'all didn't fight too much last weekend. Anyway, welcome back. Who did they play? I'm, I'm such a fake fan. <laughs> such a fake fan. My family is from KZN, therefore Sharks Beanie. I don't actually follow rugby all that closely. Do you know who won? No. Okay, I'm gonna look it up. Sharks versus Blue Bulls. Bulls, 25-13? What the frick, no. That was the United Rugby Championship semi-final. Fake news. Part of my problem is that I've been living in the US. Oh, the finals is this Saturday. Ooh, versus Leinster. Let's go Bulls. Part, part of my problems is I've been living in the US and you can't get I can't watch it. Yeah. There's no way to know. But uh, I'll try to, now that we're we're doing this. I'll try and to. I just don't have local TV, so I don't mm. keep up with it. Yeah, I'm not going to get DSTV. Not worth. Oh, man. I guess I'm also not going to keep up with it that way. I was talking to Reese. You now looking to maybe sponsor in the Blue Bulls. See, see what we can do there. How'd that feel? UFD Tech. Kind of cool. A little wild. Uh, not something I'd ever think about. I don't, well, I don't know how much it costs. I'm just. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just like uh, how uh, Hank and John Green sponsor AFC Wimbledon, and they're in that liminal space between the left thigh and buttocks. The void. Yeah, that's like it's just a little patch, and that's all I want. Like you just put put a little, like, you know, huh? just a little guy. Like you can't see it when when it's on TV. Yeah, just it's only on in person when you. Just a little guy. Yeah, we'll see, and we'll see you tomorrow for more of the Oz Tech News.